In this video, I want to generalize what we've spoken about in the last two videos to speak about what happens when you have a lagged dependent variable in your model. So the idea here is let's say we have a company sales at time t, and we say that that's related to some measures of advertising. So it might depend on the amount of advertising which is spent today, and it might depend on the amount of advertising which was spent yesterday because people might still remember the advertising from yesterday. But we're also saying that sales potentially depends on what sales were yesterday. So it might equal gamma times the amount of sales yesterday or last week, and we're assuming that there's some sort of error in this process. So what might be your motivation for including this lagged dependent variable in your model? Well, there are sort of two types of reason. One of them is fairly econometric, in other words, it is theoretical, and that's essentially, let's say we thought that there are other factors which also determine sales, but we don't necessarily have any measurements of them. By including a lagged dependent variable, because the dependent variable itself depends on these omitted factors, because it contains these emitted factors implicitly, by including a lagged value of itself, we're kind of, in a sense, controlling for these emitted factors. It's not a completely perfect process, but it might be better than nothing. Another reason might be a sort of more practical reason or a more sort of logic-based reason, which is due to the fact that essentially, if the product is addictive, let's say we are modeling cigarettes, for example, or cigarette sales, then the amount of cigarette sales next week depend on the amount of cigarettes which were smoked this past week because there is this addictive factor. So that's another reason why you can think about including a lagged dependent variable. And the questions we're going to ask here are much the same that we asked before. Essentially, if the level of advertising is fixed and then it goes up by an amount permanently of, let's say, one unit, what is the effect which that has on sales? And that's the first question we're going to ask. And then we're going to look at what is the effect of temporary increases in advertising spend on sales. To work out the total effect of a one unit um, permanent change in advertising is quite easy. All we need to do is assume that sales is at a constant level and that advertising is at a constant level. So that we have S bar is equal to alpha plus beta one times A bar plus beta two times A bar plus gamma times S bar. We just replace S T minus one by S bar and we assume that this error term isn't important in the long run. And then all we need to do is we just need to take this gamma term over to the other side. And then that gives us an expression for S bar. Here we have the S bar times one minus gamma is equal to alpha plus, well, we can factorize out A bar. So we get beta one plus beta two times A bar. And finally, we have that S bar is equal to alpha over one minus gamma plus beta one plus beta two over one minus gamma times A bar. And when you write it in this form, it's kind of immediately obvious that the coefficient on A bar is the long run effect of a permanent increase in advertising by one unit because it's the coefficient on A bar. So what's the intuition behind this expression? Well, the numerator tells us what the direct effect of advertising is on sales. So that's the, advertise, the, the sales which have been caused by advertising in this period and the period before that. But the denominator says that essentially, if we're assuming that this product was addictive, there will be also some long run effect of these increases in, in sales because of the fact that the product is addictive. And that's what the denominator captures. And this process is easily generalizable to circumstances where you might have another lag of dependent variable or further lags of the independent variable. Essentially, we would just amend the bottom here, it would be one minus gamma one minus gamma two, and the top we might have some other expressions, beta three, beta four, etc. 
So it's an easy method to generalize to slightly more complicated processes. But generally, having a single lag of a dependent variable is usually sufficient for most purposes. Okay, so what's the effect of a temporary increase in advertising? So now we're saying that, let's say, advertising goes up by one unit just for that particular period. So AT goes to AT plus one. What are the effects through time of that? Well, in the period in which it occurs, there is a direct effect, which is given by beta one. Okay, that's the only effect which happens in that period. There are no other terms which are instantaneous. So we now move on to the next period. In the first period, there is the effect because of the fact that advertising has a lagged effect on sales, which is given by beta two. But furthermore, there is also an effect due to the increased sales in the last period, which comes through this gamma term here. And sales in the last period went up by beta one, so we get gamma times beta one as the second part of the increase in sales in the first period. Okay, what about for periods after that? Because we don't have any direct effects of advertising in those subsequent periods. Well, we've still got an effect of sales in future periods because we've got this lag term here. So essentially, it's this lag times the amount of sales in the period before that, in terms of the increase in the sales in period one. So we get beta two times gamma beta times gamma. And then in the third and subsequent periods, we're going to get beta two plus gamma beta times what it was in the second period times gamma again. So we're just going to get gamma squared and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when you see the, the temporary effect of sales look something like this, it becomes immediately apparent that we have to have that the modulus of gamma is less than one. Because if it wasn't less than one, then the effect would be explosive. So we can kind of draw a, a sort of mini graph as to what the temporary effect of uh, or what the effect of a temporary change in advertising is on sales. In the first period, it goes up by an amount beta one, let's say. In the next period, it might be slightly higher, it might be slightly lower. I'm gonna draw it slightly higher in the next period. So this is the beta two plus gamma times beta one in the next period. So that's after period one, that's period zero. And then in the second period, that decays by an amount gamma and the period after that, and then decays by a further amount gamma, etc. And we're getting this exponential decay. So if I join up this process, it looks something like this. So after the initial spike, we've got this exponential decrease in the effect on sales. But notice that this particular model of having a lag dependent variable infers that there are permanent or essentially infinite effects of advertising on sales, or it, not infinite in terms of their size, but infinite in the fact that they're very persistent. They essentially persist forever. And that may or may not be a very realistic assumption for um, most situations. And um, frequently it's actually the case that this isn't a realistic assumption when you're modeling sales, because you don't expect that changes in advertising today necessarily propagate forever. And Notice the other thing about this structure which we've drawn here. Essentially, we, if you were to sort of draw a line here, you would conclude, looking to the right of this line, that we had some sort of AR model. And that's absolutely right, because essentially we've just got a lagged dependent variable in our model, which is exactly the same as the lagged dependent variable we had in, let's say, xt is equal to rho times xt minus one plus some error. So we've definitely got an AR model, but we've also got, if you were to examine these first two terms here, we've also got elements of an MA model because of the fact that essentially we've got a covariance between sales in one period and the next, which is given by beta two. So this type of model, which has got both elements of an MA and an AR process is sometimes referred to as a type of armor model. It's not always because of the fact that armor often implicitly means that we're talking about an MA process in the errors, 
but it can be referred to as an ARMA model because essentially we do have elements of both an MA process and an AR process, except the fact that the MA process here is in independent variables rather than in the error. 